Hey guys, welcome to this welcome to this episode of Youth Iowa Bassin. Uh, today what I want to talk to you guys about today is a technique that I have done very very well on. Uh, this previous season it was a great great bait. Um, it's a little bit that I've always known, um, but this year it really did turn on in a big way. Uh, and that is a chatterbait, or some people call them bladed jigs. Uh, but we'll just call them charter baits for now. Not be just not because I'm a Z-Man guy. It's just it's easier for me to say than blade jigs. Um, what is a charter bait? It's basically the same profile as a swim jig or a spinner bait or even just a normal jigging pig, but it has I almost want to say home home plate base shape on it. I don't know how you technically describe it, uh, but it's basically it just has a blade, and then you have your line tie that's connected to the blade, and when you tie it on and reel it in, it, it just has an incredible vibration and thump. It feels like a crankbait, but uh, but all it's doing when you feel that is this blade's kicking back and forth very very violently, um, and we and when this whole bait gets going, I mean, it's just shaking. I mean. The skirt starts flaring out. Uh, it's a less threatening uh, type way in fish. It was, it's a great technique in clear water. It's also a great technique in muddy water because of, just because of the vibration. And you can alter how well bladed jig fishes in, in other in water colors, but we'll get on that in a little bit. Um, why do I like them? I like them because it's like a square bill. You can cover and cover water with these. They're just a little bit more snag resistant. They're a lot more better in grass. Um, you can skip. You can skip. Uh, you can skip docks with these, or you can just skip with them and no uh, normally, just like you, know, you could a jig. But now you just have a bait that can that you can skip and reel through. Um, because I've always believed if you can introduce a new, especially on a highly pressured lake, if you can introduce a new lure that they that they haven't seen and it moves fast, they react in a big, big way. I when I for, when I first took this out to a to a private lake, oh, they just smashed the crap out of this thing. I mean, I caught so many fish and a lot of big fish. Big fish do like this bait. Um, why why they work? Uh, just basically, you can just they can it, just cover cover water. You can just cover water with this thing. Um, and but the thing is, it's the where this thing really really shines is in grass with the vibration and just being only a single hook. It just breaks through grass a lot more easier, especially in the early spring. But just a great, great fish catcher. This is a bait that you can throw spring, summer, fall. You know, if you're someone who fishes in the winter, you can maybe throw this in winter. I've never experimented with this, but it catches them through all the seasons. I've caught fish on it through all the seasons that I fish, through all the months I fish. I should say. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a great, great bait. And now we're gonna get into some colors. Blade colors is really important in my retrieve. So we'll start with the retrieve. When you're fishing a chatterbait, I mean, of course, you make your cast. You can fish this place in the exact same spots as the spinnerbait. It's just now it doesn't flash nearly as much. It still flashes, just not nearly as much as a spinnerbait would. But where this thing really, really shines is just in grass. And you can retrieve it the exact same way as a spinner bait, but this is where I do get a little bit herky jerky with my retrieve. So when I'm reeling it and I'm pop I mean when I'm reeling it and reeling it, reeling it and all of a sudden my bait my blade stops pumping, I mean I just give it a real quick pop and a lot of times what happens is that there's debris or grass that's that's fouled up in the blade, and you do that real good pop. It just breaks free, and a lot of times that's what triggers a fish in, in that's what triggers a fish in striking this thing. Um, but just uh, you can if you if you decide to fish one 
you know, like in a black and blue color or green pumpkin color. You can finish it like a jig, and I know a lot of guys like to do that. Um, it's a great way in early spring to catch fish. Um, just a great all around. It's, it's just it's just a very versatile bait. You can throw it in anywhere. I can't emphasize it enough, but like I said, just fishes and grass really really well. Um, blade color. Blade color is something that I think it's overlooked a lot. It's a lot of people nowadays like do like to throw a chatter bait, but when people don't pay attention to their blade color, it, it, that's what drives people away from a chatter bait. Because it, I truly do believe your blade color is a big, big deal. So let's start. Let's start from dark to bright. In muddy water, when I'm throwing a black and blue swim jig, uh, blade, uh, chatter bait, uh, that's what I really, really like them is in muddy water, the black and blue one especially. When you're throwing this and you're just, and you know, you're, you're just reeling it. It's just, it's just, when it's shaking and everything, it just looks like a bluegill going. Um, but, this isn't a good example. Uh, I just got this one. But what I normally would do, I take a sharpie, a black sharpie, and color the entire blade black. Reason being, is that I have never ever seen a bluegill with a shiny head. I've always seen it with a dark thing. With a dark, with, I've always seen them dark, and um, I just think that it can drive a lot of fish away, especially in clear water. And 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 when and when fishing in muddy water, especially, I think they're just looking for a lot more of the vibration and flash. So that's something to keep in mind. In clear water, and you're doing the same thing. You're mimicking bluegill. Get your blade black. This one already is black. Some companies. Are, are now already like Picasso and Z-Man I've seen them um, I'm sure other companies are doing it they're already making their blades darker and that's fine I mean I have fish and straight the pack and caught fish but I always color it I always color it black just for the same thing I've never seen a bluegill with a shiny head um, now on the other side of it if you're mimicking shad or just bait fish that's when I do just leave my blades gold and white. Um, in stained water or in muddy water and there's shad around, there's bait fish around, or if they're just on or if they're just on chartreuse and white baits, um, gold is my all time favorite color. Um, I don't know what it is, but for just some reason gold will outfish silver, you know, I can't give you a ratio, but it will outfish silver <laughs> silver. Um, but in stained water, gold is a great, great color in stained water just because of how, I believe it just, it gives off a lot more flash because in muddy water, it is beneficial to give off flash as bait fish do have shiny scales and they do reflect in the sun. But chartreuse and white is a standby for many, many anglers, including me, and it's just a great color. Um, I don't have one with me. But if you're in clear water, uh, super white or just pure white colors work great. Sexy shad colors do work great. Um, but in clear water, that's when I do like a silver blade. It just camouflages a little bit better with shad and everything. Like that. Trailers, trailers are very, very important when it comes to bladed jigs. You can fish them without a bladed jig, without a trailer. Um, I've done that a lot. That's how I started fishing. I didn't fish the trailer at all of them, just fish the skirt. But, um, but now as I've gotten better with tragic baits, and I've learned more about them, I should say, is that trailers do make a big difference. Um, it's just a, it's just a really really important topic to cover. On. So, types of trailers are important early in the spring. Um, if I'm slow rolling, or any time I'm just slow rolling a bladed jig, a Strike King Ray Swimmer is my go-to, is my go-to choice. Or just a swim bait that has ribs and just, and just can kick at a slow speed, or just has a wide, wide wobble. That's a great, great choice. 
I like striking products. I mean, I just love striking products. That's why I started fishing, and they're still doing great today. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I'm slow rolling them, they just like, give off a great, great kick and everything like that. Uh, but when I'm fishing faster, or if I'm in clear water, because when, when you fish the same, when you fish a ray swimmer or any swim bait like this, they have a trouble at, of kicking at high speeds. Um, they just don't work nearly as good at high speeds. So when I'm burning them or just ripping them through grass or in clear water, that's when I decide to go with a striking blade minnow. And what it is, it's basically like a fluke style bait, but it has little ribs in here. And, uh, I mean, this bait is super, super durable. You can catch a lot, a lot of fish on it before having to switch one out. Um, but when this thing's going, when this, when this bait, when this is on the back of a bladed jig, I mean, these little things are just kicking and kicking and kicking and kicking. Uh, this is a great bait in early spring, especially a fish a little bit more skittish. Uh, it's a little bit more subtle. It's less threatening and it looks more like a bait fish than anything. There's a lot of companies that make swim baits like this. Um, Lake Fork, I know a lot of guys like to throw Lake Forks. Um, Gary Yon Model, uh, yeah, Gary Yon Model just came out with one called Zac Zacco, I think. Zaco. And uh, that one's really, really taking off the market. That, um, I'm very sure Gary Model makes very nice products. But for me, I like uh, this blade metal. So, and any, and any bait like this in a minnow shape would work. It's just, I look for ones that have those little, that have those little ribs in them. Just so that they swim a lot better. Um, color choices in, in bladed jig fishing for my bluegill mimicking baits. Uh, green pumpkin is a great one. Or you can throw KVD Magic. KV, or just one like this. I don't know what other companies would call this type of color, maybe a dirt or sand type thing. But what this one has, KVD Magic, it has like a yellow or green tint with a with like a gray silverish bottom to it with blue flake in it. Man, they do like this one. At some points when they won't buy a green pumpkin, this is a great, great color. Um, last thing I'm gonna tip I'm gonna tell you. For a blade jig, is that with any tree, with any color choice that you go with, besides a super white, that's the only exception. I don't do this. Is that if I'm throwing a bluegill colored one, a black and blue one, or chartreuse and white, I always dip the tail, the tail piece of my trailer, in a dye, any type of dye, and I always dip it in chartreuse. Chartreuse is a great, great. Choice. Um, I found fish that really eat it a lot better with that. I don't know if it's a set or anything, but I have gone behind guys with 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 a dye trailer or a blade jig and caught fish behind people. Uh, right on the reel setup, you can use your exact same sprinter bait combo. Just if you're on a budget or anything, but if you like I am, if you want to really get techy about it and you really want to get into this. I would recommend a rod that has a lot of backbone, but yet has a very soft tip. Because it's like a crankbait, they need to eat something like that. They need to inhale it. But with this rod, with my Ducket Ghost, it's just, with my Ducket Ghost, since it's a 6 8, medium heavy, has a lot of tip, so they can eat it a little bit, but then it has a great backbone to drive that hook home. Just like a sprinter bait and a jig, it has a big hook on it. Um, 7 to 1 or 6 4 to 1 gear ratio reel is great. Um, I would not recommend throwing a blade jig on braid just because uh, some of the some of the line snaps are thin and you can rip some of them out. The same thing with the hook, you can bend hooks out with them. Fluorocarbon is a great line for this. Um, monofilament would work. But if you are a braid guy, that's your choice. Um, I know a lot of guys like to like, throw a braid. Because a lot of things in fishing are personal preference, and just I am a big time fluorocarbon fan. So that's my so that's it. I mean, for china baits, it's a great way to catch fish, especially in grass. If you're a guy who fishes a lot of grass, like it's a great technique, but it's also a great technique around the country. So 
Uh, take some of these tips, have fun with try to make fishing, and we'll get to you soon.